Hi, welcome back. Today we're talking about how a 90 year old man showed me what's going to happen with the internet service providers very quickly. We have a 90 year old man who paid $10,000 to the Wall Street Journal to put a quarter page ad on the website with the goal of having the CEO of AT&T pay attention to his plea to getting his long promised fast internet. So it's basically an open letter where he paid $10,000 and says, Dear Mr. Stanky, AT&T prides itself as a leader in economic communication. Unfortunately for the people who live in North Hollywood, California, AT&T is now a major disappointment. Many of our neighbors are the creative technical workers in the Universal, Warner Brothers, Disney Studios in the adjacent city of Burbank and our city. We need to keep up with the current technology and have looked at AT&T to supply us with fast internet service. Yet, although AT&T is advertising speeds of up to 100 megabits per second, our neighborhoods, the fastest now available to us, is only 3 megabits per second. Your competitors now have speeds of over 200 megabits per second. Why is AT&T a leading communications company treating us so shabbily in North Hollywood? Sincerely, Aaron Epstein, an AT&T customer since 1960. And he left his phone number and his packbell.net email. So what happened is the AT&T CEO saw the ad. Within 48 hours, the guy had new fiber lines wired to his house and he has very fast internet. So what happened is AT&T spent thousands of dollars, according to their own technicians, to run fiber optic lines three miles from the neighboring area to this guy's home. So AT&T is not embarrassed. The way this happened, it points out how unscalable a wired internet service is. And when you have comparison with SpaceX and Starlink, it becomes obvious what's going to happen with the internet service that we have in the year 2021. As I'm, as I'm recording this, SpaceX just launched another 60 satellites today. And I did more research on how much it actually costs SpaceX to launch satellites in space for their Starlink service. It costs launching a used Falcon 9 15 million dollars. That's the cost that's to SpaceX. At the same time, Starlink satellites cost about 250,000 each. So if we do the math, it comes out to about 30 million dollars per launch for SpaceX to launch 60 satellites. So let's do some math here. If 60 satellites that circle the Earth 24 times a day give SpaceX the capacity the theoretical capacity to have a million and a half customers out of those 60 satellites. Of course, in conjunction with others, but we're just going to average out some numbers here. That means that it costs SpaceX. The cost of acquisition of a new customer comes to about $20 per customer. Now let's add in another $30 per customer for research and development. It comes out to about 50. Now let's double it just for to, to be conservative. It goes to $100 per customer. Now let's double it again to be even extra conservative. So it costs $200 for uh, SpaceX to acquire new customers. That's their marginal cost. Compare that with AT&T, where it costs them thousands of dollars to wire a 90-year-old guy's house three miles off their nearest fiber cable. And this is in North Hollywood, California, highly populated, dense area. This guy did not live in the boonies, even though there is a whole bunch of people who live in rural areas where that type of connection would cost AT&T even more money. So while we have customers begging and paying $10,000 for AT&T just to pay them attention, at the same time, SpaceX is rolling out the service worldwide basically you'll be able to sign up for starlink service globally by the end of this month and in many cases you can already sign up for it now you pay a hundred dollars deposit 
for the privilege to wait online so SpaceX can catch up on manufacturing satellite dishes. This is the biggest bottleneck. Satellite dishes and satellites up in space. From what we've seen so far, SpaceX has figured out manufacturing satellites at a cadence to where they can launch 60 satellites every two weeks in space. And their biggest bottleneck will be manufacturing the satellite dishes. Nobody is doing that for wired internet. Nobody is setting up a deposit for somebody to have the privilege of AT&T overcharging them, sending technicians that never show up, being without service for long periods of time. But they are for SpaceX. Even though it's still a better service, they have over 10,000 paying customers for a service that launched about two months ago in very limited capacity. And they already have pre-orders for 670,000 customers. That was before they opened the service globally. This was when it was in the very early stages, only available in rural areas. AT&T's costs will keep going up regardless of whatever their competition does. Labor costs keep going up, regulations or easements and digging ditches for the streets of cities will keep going up. At the same time, their product is not scalable where it can be offered globally. The product is extremely local. So if you think about how SpaceX will be competing against the established internet service providers, is basically SpaceX is competing against a whole bunch of small, locally tied monopolies that are not allowed to expand their service beyond predetermined borders with costs keep going higher and companies that are losing money on their second core product. If the core product of cable companies until very recently was cable TV. This is being cut out and eaten by Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus and so on, all the streaming services. Their, their idea was we're going to lose money slowly but surely from people cutting the cable cord, but we'll be charging more for internet. And that was their saving grace. So SpaceX now comes and says, no, you're not going to be able to charge more for internet as you were planning. And not only that, but expanding your service and getting more customers will be immensely more expensive for you than it will be for us. We compete on a global scale. Our cost of acquisition of new customers is extremely low compared to yours. And because we don't send technicians to anybody's home and we don't dig ditches and we don't ruin the roads, I, expansion for us doesn't cost anything where it costs you always a lot of money for permits and labor. And while all of this is happening, we have existing Starlink customers already posting pictures of the speeds that they're getting. SpaceX promised speeds between 50 and 150 megabits with a lot of downtime. So far, customers are getting between 50 and 250 megabits per second with very little downtime. The service works in the most extreme weather because the Starlink dishes are designed in a way where it snows on them, they melt the snow. Nobody knew that before. Two months ago, nobody knew that Starlink dishes have some kind of heating element that um, makes sure that they don't get frozen over from bad weather. And it, they perform extremely well in bad weather. And this is customers that, again, Companies like AT&T have never even thought about going after because to them they're too expensive to even offer the product to. What this 90-year-old customer showed me is that there will be a very quick change in how we get our internet service. Cable companies are one of the most hated companies in the United States. Their customer service is horrible. They routinely overcharge people. They put you in contract, and while the contract is still in power, they raise the prices, and at the same time, their service is not reliable and not very fast. But due to their monopoly so far, they've been able to get away with it. We're going to have a lot of people transitioning to Starlink internet, especially for people who rent homes. 
they might move from one city to another relatively regularly for job, school, and so on. People don't want to deal with internet companies, contracts, and cancellation fees, returning modems, and renting modems. When you can just have one account with Starlink, and you just pick up your dish, move it to where you're going to be moving to, and your service keeps going. You don't have to wait for a technician to come to your house. None of that. And you know what you're going to get for your money. I, I thought it will take years and years for that type of service to become popular for mainstream America. I was wrong. It's going to happen extremely quickly. As quick as SpaceX can make satellite dishes, that's how quickly other companies will start losing customers. And combine that with the fact that they're losing cable TV customers, we're going to have a lot of price hikes for the remaining of the customers. Worse customer service than even they have right now. And it will become a snowball effect that it won't be stopped may not be the only company offering that service we have one web in the uk which is government sponsored we have blue origin which is jeff bezos sponsored that have admitted to have the similar goals and hopefully they do because we don't have we don't want to have a monopoly at least we want to have some competition in that space as well but that change will happen as quickly as satellite dishes are manufactured and that brings me to point number two. What this shows us is we've been hearing for years and years that the robots are coming for our jobs. And this to me always sounded a little abstract because what we imagined is robots taking over manufacturing jobs. And if you're an American, you weren't really worried about it because first, the Chinese took your manufacturing job. So you really didn't care if a manufacturing job goes to a Chinese guy or to a robot. It really didn't matter. But what we see now is robots actually starting to take over service jobs. Because the way Starlink is set up, it has basically zero labor intensive parts in it. You don't need technicians. You don't need people working with cities and permits and any of that. You don't, you, you're going to have way less billing issues because people are not going to be canceling their service. They're just going to pick up their dish and move it from one location to another. So you don't have any cancellations, any of the sort. That means a lot of jobs lost. And this is the first example that I personally saw of how the robots are coming for us. What we didn't know is the robots are going to be up in space. What we do not know is the robots are not going to care if you're American, Chinese, European or Australian. They will just take over the jobs or the service technicians. And that'll be it. Robots don't care what nationality you are. They don't care where you are. You're on a boat, we'll give you service. You're in South America, we'll give you service. You're in New York City, we'll give you service. And they'll keep getting cheaper. The price you see for Starlink right now is the highest price you'll ever see for Starlink. From, that, from now on, Starlink will either get faster for the same money or cheaper for the same speed that you have right now. But it will never get more expensive. You always have a better value proposition from that point on. And this is just the early stages of it. So a 90-year-old guy showed me <laughs> how the internet is going to change rather quickly, which I could not imagine. And he also showed me how the robots are coming for our jobs. I did not see that coming. 